önüne akan yüzseydi kiseydi. So shall we start now? Uh, uh let me just in introduce you uh very briefly. But I cannot okay. see your slide actually. No, uh, I cannot. I cannot see mm. what what uh your slide. Screen? Scre not you, not your uh, not your face, uh your slide screen. Okay, let, let me try again. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, uh, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let me start uh, and let me uh, briefly introduce uh, today's speaker. Um, so it's great pleasure to have uh, uh, Pan Lui Ni. Uh, he is a uh, 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 a PhD student of uh, uh, Fudan University. He got a PhD just last month. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so he's working on uh, some weak game theory, particularly depends on uh, some unknown function itself. Okay, so the uh, uh, title of his talk today is Hamilton Jacobi equation depend depending uh sorry deposits uh, continuously on the uh, on the unknown function okay please okay thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation so it's my great pleasure <clears throat> to give a talk here uh, today i want to talk about the hamilton equations depending Lipschitz continuously on the unknown function but first i want to give an introduction and in this talk i will consider this four form of the nonlinear differential equation. And this is called the first order hamilton jacobi equation. And for this form, we call it the stationary equation. And the uh, function capital H here, we, call, we often call it the Hamiltonian. And the variable x, we assume it belongs to a connected, compact, smooth Riemannian manifold and without boundary. And the capital D, we denote it for the a uh, derivative of the function in res with respect to the variable x. And of course, we consider the corresponding evolutionary equation. And for these two forms of the nonlinear PDE, we will consider the viscosity solutions, which was introduced by Crandall uh, and Lyons. Okay. So why are we concerned about uh, Hamilton Jacobi equations depending on the unknown function u. So here I want to give a physical background. So this second order nonlinear equation, we often call it the reaction diffusion equations in the in physics. And the term depends on the unknown function, we call it the reaction term. And roughly speaking, the, the Hamiltonian and it can be considered as an entry, can be written as the exponential form. And it is direct to say the Hamiltonian, when the Hamiltonian is increasing in the unknown function u, there is a dissipation effect. And when the Hamiltonian is independent of the variable u, there is a conservative effect. And when the Hamiltonian is decreasing in the variable u, we find there is an inner excitation effect. And when the Hamiltonian is non-monotone in the variable u, it both has a dissipation effect and the inner excitation effect at the same time. And when the Hamiltonian vanishes, uh, the, the reaction diffusion equation reduces to the heat equation. And when, and this second order term, we call it the diffusion term. And the constant new here, we call it the diffusion coefficient. And when the diffusion coefficient vanishes, we often call the 
reaction diffusion term uh, equation, the degenerate parabolic equation or the first order Hamilton Jacobi equation. So in this talk, if not otherwise stated, we assume the Hamiltonian is of class C3. And first, it uh, is strictly convex in the variable P. And second, uh, the Hamiltonian is superlinear in the variable P. And last, the Hamiltonian is uniformly Lipschitz continuous in the variable U. Hanro, we cannot hear you. Yeah, me either. I think Hanro, can you hear us? Now. I think it's, it's frozen. Maybe it's internet connection problem. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Maybe. We can wait for him to come back. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, because sometimes I thought I heard that you need to go through VPN to go to Zoom, right? I mean, um, then sometimes it could be a little bit uh, complex. No, Zoom, it's oh. okay. We oh. cannot host, but uh, to join, it, it should be okay. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, there's certain interest in this problem among the younger audience, you know, like I think like uh, Sun or Dohin here, or some other people are also working on similar problems. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No problem. Okay. Yeah, you can start from uh, where it was uh, left over. Okay. Uh, so uh, now, can you see my slides? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, uh for the second case, the Hamiltonian U is independent of the variable uh Hamilton H is independent of the variable U. And in the uh, for the second case, we have the Aubrey Master theory and we can theory. And in this call talk, I will mainly focus on the third case. That is the Hamiltonian is decreasing in the variable U. Or it, the Hamiltonian mm -hmm. may be no monotone in the variable U. And for the last case, the comparison principle fails. And we cannot apply the Paris method to get the existence of the viscosity solutions. Uh, here I give three examples. The first is the Hamiltonian decreasing in the variable U. And the second and the third example are the Hamiltonian non-monotone in the variable U. 
So first, I want to talk about mm -hmm. the so-called ergodic problem. Uh, what is the uh, ergodic problem? It is to find the constant C such that the stationary equation has viscosity solutions. And here, I want to talk about the result given by Leon's perpendicular and the weird hand. And they prove that there is a unique constant C0 such that the stationary equation has viscosity solutions. If and only if the constant C on the right hand side equals uh, unique constant C0. And here we can see that the, the stationary equation is independent of the variable U. So the, the here the unique constant C0 is often called the effective Hamiltonian or the Manier critical value. For the critical value, here I also give a beautiful representation formula, which is a infimum supreme formula given by Contrindias and his collaborators. And for the uh, most general case, that is the Hamiltonian is in Lipschitz continuous in the variable U. Professor Kaiju Wang, Ling Wang, and uh, Jun Yan prove that there is a constant C such that the stationary equation has viscosity solutions and different from the, the different from the 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 the, the, the case the equation is independent of the stationary equation. Here the constant C is maybe not unique. And Professor Jing, Professor Mitaki, and Professor Chen generalize this result to the standard PDE assumptions. And they prove that there is a constant state such that the Hamiltonian here is a continuous superlinear in P and uniformly Lipschitz in U. They prove that the stationary equation has viscosity solution. Okay, to further study this kind of problem. Uh, I define the so-called the, the admissible set, and we and I denote the capital C for the set of all the constant C such that the stationary equation has solutions. And from the result I mentioned before, we have known that the admissible set is not and we can prove that it's connected. Here, I give some examples of the admissible set. Uh, first, uh, if we consider the equation independent of the unknown functions u, we have known that the, the admissible set only contains one point, and this point is a many critical value. And we, if we consider the discounted Hamilton Jacobi equation, we can prove that the admissible set is a whole real line R by the parents method. So here I want to mention one of my result, which is joined by uh, joined with Professor Kai Zhuang and Professor Junyan. We prove that the Hamiltonian, if the Hamiltonian is periodic in the variable U. The admissible set is a compact interval. And here is another result given by Professor Jing, Professor Yan, and Professor Zhou. They prove that if the Hamiltonian is of this, this form, that is uh, lambda x times u, and this Hamiltonian is of class C3, strictly convex and superlinear in the variable p, and the function lambda x changes size, that is, there are two points here, x1 and x2, such that the lambda x1 is positive and lambda x2 is negative. They prove that the, the admissible set is uh, uh, half unbounded and half bounded, this this unbounded bounded interval like this. And the left end point is a finite number and, and uh, it is also can be called it the critical value and has a following representation formula, which is also given by the inframe supreme formula.
And for the most general case, Professor Kajwan and Jun Yan uh, gave the description of the admi admissible set. They prove that they, they, they define the, these two uh, values. The first one is given by the inframe supreme formula, and the second one is given by the supreme inframe formula. And here, the, the, the constant CR may be positive infinity. And the, 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 the constant CR may be negative infinity. Then they prove that the, the admissible set have this uh, following relation, and it is it can be say uh, it, uh, we can see that uh, the admissible set can be open or closed, and it be can be bounded or unbounded, and the endpoints, the left endpoints of the admissible set. It's just the, 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 the constant air and the right endpoint of the admissible set is just the constant CR. So here I want to talk <laughs> about the, the large time behavior of the Hamilton Jacobi equation, depending on the unknown function. Uh, we consider the following Cauchy problem with the initial function which is a continuous function. And we can uh, we consider this, this Cauchy problem and uh, we can prove that the, 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 the viscosity solution is unique. And by the uniqueness, we can see that the, the operator here, T minus T is a semigroup and we call it the backward solution semigroup. And by definition, it is direct to say that the fixed points of the Backward solution semigroup are solutions of the corresponding stationary equation. So for the large time behavior of the Cauchy problem, uh, first I want to mention uh, the most general case, which is given by Professor Yixi, Professor Kajwan, Professor Ling Wang, and Professor Yan. Uh, they prove that when the Hamiltonian is Lipschitz continuous, in the variable u. Uh, the lower half limit, if it is finite, is the solution of the corresponding stationary equation. Here, the lower half limit is defined. First, uh, we take the inframe uh, for the uh, point y, which is contained in a open ball around the point x. And next, we, next, uh, we let the, the, the distance between y and x tends to zero and the time tends, tends to infinity. And by definition, this lower half limit is lower semi-continuous and the proof that it is uh, Lipschitz con continuous and is a viscosity solution of a stationary in the sense of Crandall and Leon's. And I have mentioned that this result still holds for the Hamiltonian satisfies the standard PDE assumptions. That is, H is continuous, convex, and coercive in P. Uh, what I mean is uh, Hamiltonian when the the, the the variable tends to uh, variable P tends to infinity. The Hamiltonian tends to positive infinity uniformly in the variable X, and it is also uniformly Lipschitz in the variable U. And in this work, the initial data can be lower semit continuous, and the solution semigroup stands for the lower semi continuous solution in the sense of Baron Jensen. So, for the uh, increasing case, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, in this case, we can find the dissipation effect. So we can expect that all the uh, solution of the Cauchy problem uniformly converges as t times to infinity. And this result was proved by Professor Su, Professor Lin Wang, and Professor Yan. So if we consider the infinite dimensional dynamical system defined by the backwards solution semigroup, 
then all the fixed points of the backward solution semigroup are stable. So uh, now we consider the decreasing case. And to consider this case, we have to introduce a forward semigroup, which is in which is defined by the backward semigroup of the Hamiltonian, which is defined by the uh, capital H X um, negative P negative U. And uh, we, by definition, we can see that if we consider the forward semigroup uh, when the So it, 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 uh, we can see that if we consider the forward semigroup uh, when the Hamiltonian is increasing in the variable u, it is equivalent to consider the backward semigroup when the Hamiltonian is decreasing in u. Because we have the minus u here in the dual Hamiltonian. And by the definition of forward and backward semigroup, we can define the backward Wickham solution, which are the fixed point of the backward solution semigroup. And the and by definition, it is a viscosity solution of the stationary equation. And we also define the forward Wickham solution, which are the fixed points of the forward semigroup and by definition, uh, the negative uh, of the uh, forward Wickham solution is a viscosity solution of the uh, dual stationary equation. Uh, here, if we if we assume that the Hamiltonian edge is increasing in the unknown function, uh, and we consider the Wickham solution it is equivalent to consider the stationary equation, which is decreasing in the unknown function u. So when the Hamiltonian is decreasing in the variable u, uh, and we consider the forward Wickham solution uh, by the statement here, uh, yeah, it is equivalent to consider the stationary equation when the, uh, the Hamiltonian is decreasing in the variable u. So by the comparison principle, the forward Wickham solution is unique. And, and here, uh, the large time behavior of the uh, case, the Hamiltonian is decreasing in the variable u is given by Professor Kedra Wang, Lin Wang, and Junye. And they prove that the initial function, if the initial function is no smaller than the unique uh, forward Wickham solution, and there is a point such that the initial function equals the unique forward solution at this point, then the solution of the Cauchy problem is uniformly bounded for all time t. And if the initial function is strictly larger than the unique forward solution, then the solution of the Cauchy problem uniformly turns to the positive infinity. And finally, if there is a point such that the initial function is strictly smaller than the forward solution at this point, then they prove that the solution of the Cauchy problem tends to negative infinity uniformly. Uh, so can we see more about the first case? That is the solution of the Cauchy problem is uniformly bounded. Uh, here I also gave a result, uh, which, which was proved by Professor Kedra Wang, Jun Yan, and Zhao. They prove that when the Hamiltonian is strictly decreasing in the variable u and satisfy the following dynamical assumption. 
Then they prove that there is, exist infinite many non-trivial time periodic viscosity solutions of the evolutionary equation and with different periods. So we cannot expect to uh, expect the all the solution of the Cauchy problem tends to the a solution of the stationary equation as time tends to infinity. So the dynamical complexity appears when there are unstable fixed points of solution semigroup. And here the unstable fixed points is the unique forward, forward solution here. So how about the Hamiltonian changes its size? Here I consider this uh, model and uh, the, 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 the function lambda x changes size. Uh, that is, there are two points x1 and x2 here, such that lambda x1 is positive and lambda x2 is negative. And here uh, we assume that the, the, the Hamiltonian HSP is satisfies the standard P, uh, PDE assumptions. That is, it, it is continuous, convex, in the variable p and coercive in variable p and the function lambda x is continuous. And we recall the definition of the critical value that is given by this infimum supreme formula. And this model also has a canonical mean. The first, I want to mention one of my results. Uh, we first generate the result given by Professor Jing, Professor Yan, and Professor Zhao. We prove that the, the admissible set is still like this uh, half bounded, half unbounded interval. And if, uh, if we consider the, the constant C, in the right hand side of the stationary equation. We prove that there exists the maximal solution and the minimal solution. And in terms of the correspondence between the forward uh, backward semigroup and the forward semigroup, um, we also have the maximal and the minimal forward solutions. And we construct the, the minimal solutions from the limit of the, the maybe I, I should use my pencil. So, so we construct the, 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 the minimal solution from the limit of the, this, this function. And we can prove that uh, the, the, this function is, uh, Known decreasing in the time t, so the minimal forward solution is uh, smaller than the minimal solution, and we also construct the maximal forward solution by the maximal solution, and we can prove that the th this function is 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 known increasing in the time t, and so we can prove that the maximal forward solution is a little bigger than the maximal solution. And we are going to show that the maximal solution is stable and the minimal forward solution is uh, unstable. So here is a picture of the structure of the solution set of the stationary equation. Here the capital Uh, capital S here is the fixed point of the solution group, and this is also the the backward and the forward become solution of the stationary equation. And here we denote the operator capital T plus and T minus for the limit of the solution semigroup. And in this 
the, the set of the forward and backward solutions. We have the, the so-called conjugated became solutions, which are the images of the, the limit operator, T plus and T minus. So to study the large time behavior of this non-monotone model, we have to assume the Hamiltonian is continuous, strictly convex, and superlinear in the variable p, and will uh, and let uh, the function u x t be the solution of the Cauchy problem. And here also assume that the constant c is low smaller than the corrective value. Then we have the maximal solution and the minimal solution. And first, if the initial function phi is uh, above the maximal solution, we prove that the solutions of the Cauchy problem converges to the maximal solution uniformly. And if there is a point x0 such that the initial function is strictly smaller than the minimal forward solution at the point x0. Then we prove that the, the solution of the Cauchy problem uh, uniformly turns to negative infinity. And if we assume the constant C is strictly larger than the critical value, and if the initial data is stri strictly larger than the uh, minimal forward solution, then the solution of the Cauchy problem converges to the maximum solution uniformly. So here is a remaining problem. Uh, uh, just like the decreasing case, uh, I, I, there is a re result I mentioned before that we can find infinite number solutions uh, around the, the, the unique uh, unstable forward solution. And here, if we consider this no monotone case, and uh, we can prove that uh, when the initial data is uh, a little smaller than the minimum forward solution, and there is a, a point x0 here, such that the, the, the initial data is equals the minimal forward solution at this point. The, the, the solution of the Cauchy problem is uniformly bounded. So in this case, can we find the ter time periodic solutions? So first, uh, let, me, let me prove the existence of the maxim, uh, the maximal solution and the minimal solution. So we define the Lagrangian of the Hamiltonian edge from the Leon transformation. And here is a representation formula of the forward sim uh, backward semigroup. And here the solution semigroup is defined implicitly. Uh, here we can see that the, the solution semigroup appears on both sides of the equality. This kind of transition formula still holds for the, the case Hamiltonian satisfies the standard PDE con, uh, condition. That is the Hamiltonian uh, is of the form HXPU and it is continuous, convex and corrosive in the variable P and it is uniformly Lipschitz in the variable U. And comparing to the work of Professor Yixi, Professor Kaiju Wang, Professor Ling Wang, and Professor Yan, I mentioned before, in, in their work, the, 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 the solution semigroup stands for the, the lower uh, semi-continuous solutions in the sense of Barry-Jensen. 
here we have more regularity. Uh, we can prove that the, when the initial data is continuous, uh, this solution semigroup is a continuous solution in the sense of Crandall-Lyons. First, uh, we give, I give a lemma, which is very important in this lambda x times u model. Uh, we prove that for each continuous function as a initial function. Uh, when we apply the backward solution semigroup on this continuous function, and we can prove that it has a upper bounded independent of time t. And similarly, if we apply the uh, forward semigroup on the function phi, we can find there it is a lower bounded uniformly in the time t. And here is an outline of the proof. First, uh, by the, the, the property lambda x1 is positive, we can prove that the, 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 this, the, this, the, this function is upper bounded at the point x1. Similarly, this function is lower bounded on the point x2. And by the representation formula of the solution semigroup I gave before, we can prove that the, 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 the backward solution semigroup is upper bounded for each x. And similarly, the forward semigroup is lower bounded for each x. And here we consider the subsolution of the stationary equation. And by definition of the critical value, which is given by this infimum supreme formula, we can prove that when the constancy is smaller, strictly smaller than the critical value, there is no subsolution. And when the uh, constant C is no smaller than the critical value, there exists a subsolution. And let u zero be a subsolution. We prove that the when we apply the backward solution semigroup on the subsolution, it has a up bounded. And it is the bound is the bound is independent of the time t and the subsolution u zero. So here is a outline of the proof. Uh, first, by the definition of the subsolution, we can prove that the, the the function here the function here is upper bounded at the point x one. And then by the representation formula I gave before, we can prove that the, the, this function is upper bounded for each x. Uh, this outer line is very similar as before. And by this uh, lemma, we can prove that uh, for any subsolution of the stationary equation, the, the, the subsolution is uniformly bounded and equally sheets. And here is the outline of the proof. First, uh, u zero is a subsolution if and only if it satisfies this inequality. This 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 inequality, and we have proved that uh, the the left hand side is uh, uniformly uh, lower bounded and the right-hand side is uniformly upper bounded. So the, the subsolution u0 is uniformly bounded. And by the definition of subsolution, since u0 is uniformly bounded and h is coercive in the variable p, we can prove that the derivative of the subsolution u0 is uniformly bounded. So it is equilibrious.
So now we return to the proof of the uh, existence of the maximal solution and the minimal solution. Uh, first, we take uh, initial data large enough in uh, so that uh, it is, uh, if we uh, apply the backward solution same group, it is larger than every solution of the stationary equation. And also we have known that uh, this, this function is upper bounded. So by the result given by Professor Yixi, Professor Kajir Wang, Professor Ling Wang, Professor Yan, uh, we have known that the lower half limit is finite and it is a viscosity solution of the stationary equation. And since the, 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 the function t minus t5 is larger than every solution, the lower half limit is just the maximal solution. Similarly, we can get the minimal Ford solution by applying the uh, Ford solution semigroup. And then we construct the, the, the minimal solution from the minimal Ford solution. Okay, so and now we consider the large time behavior when the initial data above the maximal solution. Uh, when the initial function phi is no smaller than the maximal solution. We have known that the lower limit is the maximal solution. And by the definition of lower half limit, we have known that the point wisely limiting frame is no smaller than the half lower limit, which is the maximal solution. And since this function t minus t phi x has a bound independent of t. The pointwise limit, uh, which is a limit supreme, exists. And since the Hamiltonian is strictly convex and superlinear in the variable p, we can prove that the function t minus t phi x is equilibrious with respect to the time t. So the a pointwise limit is continuous, and we can apply the backward semigroup on this limit function phi uh, u bar. And since the uh, supreme of a family of subsolutions is a subsolution, we know that the uh, limit supreme uh, u bar is a subsolution. U bar is a subsolution is equivalent to the the, the inequality t minus t u bar is no smaller than the function u bar. So by the semigroup property, we can prove that the, uh, the, the, the function t minus t u bar is non-decreasing in the time t. So we can define the limit function, uh, which we call it the u bar infinity. And this limit function is, and it is a solution of the stationary equation. And by definition of the maximal solution, uh, we have the limit function u bar infinity is no larger than the maximal solution. And since the initial data is larger than the maximal solution, uh, we apply the backward solution same group it is still larger than the maximal solution. So by the definition of a, a u bar, uh, it is a limit supreme of the uh, function t minus t phi. Uh, we have we have the, the function u bar is larger than the maximal solution. So we get the, the equality here. You the, the limit the limit function u bar infinity is just the maximal solution. And we combining the, the, the inequality here. Uh, the first equality, the first equality is by definition, 
and this inequality is from that the 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 the, the function u bar is a sub solution and this equality is from this equality and by definition of the lower half limit we have this inequality uh, we finally get the, the uniformly convergence of the the function t minus t phi to the maximal solution uniformly on the manifold M. So now we consider the initial function below the minimal solution. And here I give an outline of the proof. Uh, as before, we prove that the The, the this function t minus t phi uh, tends to negative infinity pointwisely. That is, the minimal value of the this function tends to negative infinity. And to prove this pointwise uh, convergence, we use this very important inequality, uh, which shows that the forward semigroup is a weak inverse of the backward solution semigroup in some sense. And we then prove that uh, the function t minus t phi tends to negative infinity uniformly as t tends to infinity by the representation formula of the semigroup. Here, the supernality of the Hamiltonian in P is important in this proof. And we have prove that when the initial data is above the maximal solution and the initial data is below the minimal forward solution. And now we consider the initial data between the maximal solution and the minimal forward solution. And here we still let the function u0 be a critical subsolution. It is a sub-solution of the stationary equation when the uh, constant on the right-hand side is a uh, critical value C0. And for the uh, constant C strictly larger than the critical value, uh, the, 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 the function U0 is a, is a strict sub-solution of the uh, stationary equation with the right-hand side equals to C. So we can prove that this, we can prove this strict inequality. And uh, from this inequality, we can construct two different solutions, u minus and v minus from the sub strict subsolution u zero. First, we construct uh, the, 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 the solution u minus directly from the limit of this function. Uh, here we apply the backward semigroup. And then we construct a forward solution by this limit of this function. And we get, get a forward solution u plus. And then we construct another solution from this uh, forward solution u plus. We get another solution v minus and from the, the function u0 is a strictly subsolution of the stationary equation we can prove that uh, u plus is strictly smaller than the solution u0 and it is strictly smaller than the solution u plus u minus and we can prove also prove that the a solution u minus and a solution v minus here are two different solutions. So here is a lemma. It shows that the, uh, the solution u minus we construct before is just the maximal solution. And the forward solution U plus we constructed before is just the minimal forward solution. 
and the uh, solution v minus we construct before is just no solution. And uh, by the uh, since the u the function u zero is a sub solution, uh, we can have, we have the this is inequality, and we apply the backwards solution sim group on both sides, and we get the, this inequality. And by the 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 this important inequality again we get this inequality and this equality uh, from the solution uh, semigroup property of the solution semigroup and here we let s tends to infinity uh, the left hand side and the right hand side tends to the maximal solution so we get this limit equality And now we consider the initial data between the minimal fold solution and the maximal solution. And we also assume that the constant C is strictly larger than the critical value. And since we have proved in the lemma here, we have proved that the minimal fold solution is just the limit function of the, of the function T plus T U zero. So from this uh, strict inequality, there is a prime T zero such that uh, at the, this, this time T zero, uh, this function is a uh, little larger than the initial data. So uh, by this inequality, we have this inequality. And by and since uh, the initial data is a uh, low larger than the maximal solution, we have this inequality. And we let S tends to infinity. Uh, the right hand side tends to the maximal solution, which we proved before here. And uh, the right hand side is just the maximal solution. We finally uh, conclude that the, the convergence of the uh, the, the, uh, the the function t minus t phi uh, to the maximal solution. So we prove that between the fourth minimal fourth solution and the maximal solution, the solution of the corresponding uh, Cauchy problem tends to the maximal solution. <laughs> And, and when the initial data is uh, strictly larger than the minimal for the solution. Okay, pa pardon, me, have... sorry, pardon me, sorry, interrupting you. So you have uh, uh, maybe a two minutes uh, or three minutes to uh, finish your talk, okay? Oh, okay, okay. So we have known that uh, the uh, when the, uh, the initial data is above, of the maximum solution. Uh, the, the solution tends to the maximum solution. And we also have known that uh, when the initial data is between the maximum, uh, the minimum for the solution and the maximum solution, we have the, the, this convergence result. And combining this result, we finally con con conclude that when the initial data is, is larger than the minimum for the solution, we have this uh, convergence result. So here I want to give a summary. Uh, here I still consider the, the model lambda x times u. And the first one is uh, uh, when the lambda x is positive and by the comparison principle, uh, the solution is unique and it is globally stable. And when the lambda x is negative, uh, the fourth solution is unique and it is globally unstable. And in the case we consider here, uh, there is a maximal solution and a minimal fourth solution and the 
maximum solution is stable and the minimal fault solution is unstable. So near the maximum solution, the large time behavior is just like the first case. And when and near the minimal fault solution, the large time behavior is just like the second case. At last, I want to discuss the vanishing discount problem. And uh, the, the problem is to ask uh, the, uh, whether the, 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 the solution of the discount, pro, uh, discount uh, equation uniformly converges when the uh, constant lambda tends to zero. And to, uh, uh, there is a positive answer. And in this work, uh, the Hamiltonian is assumed to be convex in the variable p. And here is a negative answer. Uh, when h is not convex in the variable p, the, the solution of the discounted hamilton jacobi equation does not converge. And for the second order case, uh, here I give uh, two references. And the second order chariot. So the result include the first order case. And here is a nonlinear generalization of the vanishing discount problem. And for this uh, problem, I also give uh, some reference. And when we consider the 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 case uh, h lambda is decreasing in the variable u, uh, here is another result. They prove that the minimal solution of the uh, of the uh, discounted problem uh, discounted hamilton jacobi uniformly converges, and uh, this equation is decreasing the unknown function u. And how about the Hamiltonian, uh, which is in no monotone in the variable u? So, uh, here, I still consider this. Uh, model lambda x times u and lambda x changes size. And here I give an uh, example. And in this example, we, we, uh, I prove that uh, when the constant lambda is small, uh, this equation only has two solutions. And uh, one of the solutions uh, forms a family that is uniformly convergent. And at the same time, uh, there is another solution which forms another family which is divergent. And here I draw a picture. Here uh, uh, you can see that uh, when lambda is positive, uh, uh, there is a, a family convergent, uh, u lambda, and the family uh, v lambda tends to a negative infinity. And when the lambda is negative, there is a convergent family u lambda, and uh, there is another family v lambda tends to positive infinity. And so finally, I also give a remaining problem. So for the most general case, that is the Hamiltonian uh, depends on the uh, constant lambda, uh, the monotone in the unknown function u. Uh, uh, from the example I gave before. Uh, we can see that the divergent, uh, the convergent sequences and the divergent sequences appear at the same time. So, how to describe this phenomenon? Okay, uh, that's all I want to talk about today. Uh, thank you very much for your listening. Okay, thank you, Pandri, <clears throat> for your great talk. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, some uh, question comment. Or we can save it for the informal discussion after this, you know. Oh, yes. <clears throat> okay, then maybe let's stop the uh, record first. Okay, let me stop. <clears throat>